Today we're going to look at grinding fixturing and squareness in the home shop. Last episode I tried my hand at surface scraping the bottom of my mini lathe's compound slide. In this one we're going to make steps towards uh, making the adjacent side perpendicular and flat as well. Here is a uh, surface or squareness comparator. Um, you can't really get these readily online. And it uh, seems like a lot of people either make their own or modify a surface gauge. Uh, I didn't really feel like doing either of those. <laughs> It'd be a major project in and of itself. Well, luckily, our friend over at uh, Shop and Math, it's a different YouTube channel, you can check him out, Shop and Math. Uh, Ray Gallant went ahead and made this. It seems like he's a shop teacher. So, we've got the cylinder square here. This is uh, something I picked up off of eBay. I think it's a tapped pierce. Um, it's underside surface is really in really good condition. Whole thing seems like it is. Um, yeah, I've never used one of these before. I guess they're supposed to be self-proving. So I, even if the part isn't perfectly perpendicular to the this plane, uh, even if it's at a tilt, at least one edge of that two opposing uh, at 180 degrees points or lines would be perfectly square. <clears throat> so that's why it's self-proving. Anyway. All right, so here's a good view of the patterns left by the surface scraping process in the last video. As you can see, there's sort of weird scratches left over from the dull blade. Uh, seeing as my hand grinding abilities are awful, I voted, uh, you know, the, the fixture method. Um, I think it's a little less prone to human error. So it seems like a lot of people use D-bit grinders to sharpen their surface scraping blades. Um, I don't have one of those. Uh, I also found a video where Stefan Gattis Winter discusses using a bench grinder to accomplish this. And in this pile of parts here, an idea was forming, and uh, the which would use parts I already had and have this be a uh, minimal effort type of thing. But to make it work, we're going to need to do a little bit of milling and turning. So here's the general idea and my attempt at aligning the compound table. So I received a lot of really good comments in the last video uh, describing the geometry to grind or uh, put into the scraping blade. They say that a five degree negative rake is a good idea and one person recommended 115 millimeter radius. Uh, for like broad scraping, Stefan Gatzis Winter recommended 16 millimeter as a general purpose size. Um, those seem like really big differences, so I'm setting it to 80 millimeters here. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so here's the grinding jig I whipped up. Uh, just a six inch bench grinder from Harbor Freight. Uh, 
bolted onto a big old slab of steel. And this is a, just an aluminum part. It's an old uh, part of a mitering uh, fixture or tube notch or whatever. Uh, I don't need that anymore since I can notch tubes on a machine tool. This is a XY compound table that I had from trying to uh, mill on the lathe. Uh, it worked, but it just wasn't very rigid, but I think it'd be good for this application. Uh, this is part of a ball turner for the mini lathe. Uh, I just took out the cutting attachment and made this bracket to hold the uh, cutting tool for the hand scraper. And uh, as you've seen in the previous clip, I went ahead and set this length to 80 millimeters. Uh, and uh, I will be able to feed in, in this axis and slowly take material off. And uh, the grinding wheel is rotating downward like this. And if the tool were to catch or something, it would hit this rest right here and not swing back and hit me. And I don't think it would fling this way uh, because the wheel's rotating, rotating that way. But just in case any sparks or something come up, we have this little bit right here. Uh, yeah, and uh, just so that this doesn't wear on one part of the wheel, I have utilized this existing slot here from this plate um, so that the uh, entire base right here can be slid to the left and right. Uh, but I guess first, uh, gotta dress this wheel, and then I can take a little material off and quickly uh, sharpen the hand scraping bit. And then I eyeballed center height. I put some Sharpie on there to see what's going on. Alright, let's see if this thing works. Finish looks good. So I went ahead and flipped the blade in the holder and ground the other edge. And as you can see, there's a pretty severe diagonal facet to it. It's not, the split isn't down the center of the blade. For some reason, it's kind of almost going from corner to corner. You can see a shiny corner and a black corner here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I did to cause this. Yeah, you can see it's sort of like at the same height at this given length out. And if we put it in a different position, it kind of says the same thing. There's like like a thousandth or something difference. Um, which makes sense, because like, it was machined. It's a machined surface. So that can't be it. Or can it? I don't know. But yeah, seeing as it's able to span the whole edge of the cutting tool, it's still usable. It's just kind of weird. Um, but yeah, the, the edge is sort of like, doesn't feel quite as sharp as it came when it was brand new. Um, there's like a little bit of a radius on that tip. But uh, just a little more, just did a little more cutting right here and was able to get a slightly better like finish. The camera can focus. So, I mean, 
It's not like a mirror finish or whatever. But it's definitely sharper than it was when it was dull. Um, but yeah, just a little more technique. Because um, I haven't done this in like a month. But yeah, it might be worth it to find a uh, some sort of like diamond uh, grinding wheel rather than this green carbide like silica wheel because uh, I think as it's wearing like the grinding stone is wearing and creating a, a tiny radius right here on the cutting tool so I have to save up for one of those wheels and try it in the future we've got the compound slide lower here again that we scraped last time now I want to check to see how square this face is to the one that was scraped. I went ahead and took a little more time with the cylinder square. And it seems like it's actually really well calibrated. Um, you just have to be really gentle with the entire tool. Uh, It's really so, uh, so finicky, especially with the 3D, uh, you know, the PLA. Uh, I might go back and remake this tool just with aluminum, but inspired by uh, Ray's design. Um, anyway, so now that we got the surface, uh, surface comparator, uh, you know, set up with the cylinder square, you can go ahead and check this. And at this height, which is about like an inch and a half, um, it appears that the bottom of the compound is rocking. It's rocking a lot. <laughs> Maybe that's because I put expo marker on the bottom. I think it may have been. I'm going to clean everything and come back. All right, here we are back after a little bit of cleaning. Um, and everything seems to be flat. It's like the expo marker was, was the difference. So if we knock on the corners. Sounds solid. I don't hear any any ringing or shifting of the part. If we tap it, I don't feel any rock. Um, for me, that kind of put into perspective how small of a you know how precise we're being or whatever, how small of increments we're using because freaking thickness of a of a sharpie mark or expo marker set that off which is kind of crazy but uh let's go ahead and get back to business so yeah at this height I tapped it gotta calibrate it again They're looking good. But yeah, it's about uh, three, three half thousandths leaning that way. Um, so that's 1.5 thousandths leaning that way at about an inch and a half up. So we got to tilt it back, so remove a little bit more material from this edge closest to us, and vice versa on the far edge. All right, everyone, we're going to call it around here. In the next episode, we're going to fix the 
leaning compound of Pisa. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in and for your guys' attention to the last video, all the views and nice comments. Uh, really means a lot to me that so many people took interest in what's going on in my little shed machine shop. Uh, so if you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing, because I'm definitely going to be making more content like this in the future. Thanks again. I'll see you later.